Good evening, everyone. Hope you all have a wonderful day. We're going to be looking at our futures, S&P 500 futures contract. Breaking down what occurred today, not a lot to go over. Uh, kind of a lackluster day as it was an inside day. We're going to start off with what occurred during our intraday time frame with the 30 minute. First and foremost, it was a very choppy and kind of a rotational type of day as it was an inside day. We didn't do much. I have here on the 30 minute chart marked the overnight high and the overnight low. Uh, just to show you how indecisive today was. Uh, initially, we opened up with sellers having a lower value and or overlapping to lower value, excuse me. And they had initially gotten the overnight low right away, uh, filling the set of single prints from the previous day. So if I were to bring up yesterday's destinations, you'll see that right in here, we had that set of single prints that we were looking to uh, fill, right? I said, if we opened up inside or in the upper distribution above these sets of single prints and couldn't get the day's high, then you would look to rotate lower and see if you would find acceptance, uh, fill in these single prints and see if you'd find acceptance in the lower distribution and go go for the low of day. Well, we attempted because we attempted to get the overnight low, or we did get the overnight low. We filled the set of single prints, dipped our toes into the lower distribution and did not get much for it. Uh, and then later in the day, we got near the overnight high. So let me go ahead and just show regular trading hours here. We got near the overnight high in I period and didn't quite get there. Didn't quite get there. Um, but we did have the opening uh, for the most part of the day as far as buyers go. Buyers ended up moving uh, the POC, the point of control, and value higher from overlapping to lower. They moved it to unchanged. And then they moved point of control up higher to right around K's low to get 11 wide. So what does 11 wide mean? It just means we rotated back and forth through K's low. Um, this price at 43,225, 11 time frames out of the 13 time frames in the day. So pretty strong point of control there. There were only two trades I took today. Not too many. Uh, I took a afternoon pullback low. I took the long. F period. Before we get into all that, let's go to our regular destination profile here. And I can show Alright, so build the set of single prints, right? Build the set of single prints. Let's label all of our time frames. A through M. We got A B. So initial balance was A and B period, right? Uh, the New York Stock Exchange had some type of issues uh, with quoting, not quoting, but getting price uh, and trades through. So there was a bit of a technical difficulty. Uh, so whenever they got that fixed in C period, uh, they finally decided to pop the top, uh, which got the initial balance high. So that's how things were getting kind of weird. So after they got the overnight low, they took out the initial balance high. So noting that, noting that value was overlapping to lower as well, there was kind of some mixed MGI, mixed market rate, market uh, generated information. Didn't know which way the market wanted to go. So that's why you had an inside day. Um, guys, I don't know how to do an ABC. <laughs> Oh, this is not F period. This is period. period. But we had mixed MGI, inside day, rotational, which is not bad for the market. It's good for the market. You want to have some digestion of what occurred over the past several days uh, with the two trend days up. Uh, you want to see a little bit of consolidation. Uh, so the daily has gone from up to balance, in my opinion, F F E F G H. We had a little bit of excess in I period. That was near the overnight high, right? J, K, L, then an M period. We kind of flushed 
there was another great long opportunity in M period that I did not take. I did, however, take the short in K period uh, against eyes high and the overnight high. I had my stop above the overnight high. So basically not a lot happened today. We go out with today's low, today's high, an afternoon pullback low, and 11 wide point of control. I took two trades today. I took the trade in F period against, uh, at the time, half back, which is this dash line here. Half back was right around 21. Uh, we also had a uh, full session BWAP right around 24. So as we pulled back in F period, getting rid of some of these uh, buyers, these laggard buyers up here that were looking for a new high on the day, weren't really getting paid. Once we took out D's low, they flushed out uh, and we got a nice little pullback. So I took it against halfback at the time, which was at 21, and the VWAP took a three lot, uh, actually took a four lot, and as it rotated up, I peeled them off, got out about 28, 29, and 30 on uh, all the contracts. Really good trade on that part. Didn't hold it all the way to the new high on of the day because at the time, point of control was right around B's high at 29. So I was just looking for us to rotate back up to where point of control was and was a really nice trade. Then I took a trade in K period against I's high and the overnight high. I missed the trade in I, uh, which was a really good trade to rotate back down to point of control, which they had moved up to G's high at the time. So the short in I period was a really good trade for us to pull back against that overnight high, uh, pull back into the point of control. Really good trade there. Then I decided to take it in K period had my stop above the overnight high, so I was willing to add up two eyes high, so 41. Uh, the overnight high was at 41 and two quarters or something like that. I don't know. It was somewhere around there, and I took it just the one lot. It came in, and I took it off around 32. Uh, not 32, 33. Took it off around 33s, and really good short on my end. I mean, from 39 to 33 really good points there not a lot to uh review other than that let's go ahead and mark our destinations and look at the larger time frames and get you guys on your way review some if then statements on what can occur for tomorrow got our high day up here at 40.41. high day 11 wide point of control here at k's Low at 32.75, 32.75. That will act as a magnet or an area where we might get stuck and chop around for a little while. Uh, if we don't get much movement tomorrow, we may just trade back and forth through that large area of volume. Uh, 11 by goal. And wide point of control. Afternoon pullback low, which like an M period was an absolute beautiful long uh, because at the time value low was also right around F's low. Uh, you take this long against F's low, uh, put your stop right below at 2150. Uh, you get long around 22, 23. You're risking two, three points to rotate back up to point of control or uh, near it at least, which is uh, 32.75 so I mean you're looking at 10 point gain there risking two points to get to gain about eight to ten points uh, which was a really good trade opportunity there I uh, unfortunately missed out on that trade opportunity however we do have an afternoon not textbook afternoon pullback low but an area of uh, interest if we were to pull back to this because we held it not only in F period but in M period when we pulled back so at 21.50 you can look to see if we find buyers there. And then lastly, we have the day's low down here at 0525. 0525. Our low day. So, what can we look for tomorrow, right? So, if we open up inside of today's range oh, 
I did not mean to do all that. If we open up into inside today's range, either above the point of control and today's high, then we can't take out the 23rd high. If we can't take out Monday's high here, then you'll look to rotate back down into the 11 wide point of control and trade at 40.32.75. If we open up below the point of control, the 11 wide point of control, we take out the afternoon pullback low, but we can't take out the low of day, then you'll look to rotate back up to that 11 wide point of control. However, if we open up below the 11 wide point of control, take out the afternoon pullback low, <clears throat> next destination would be the 4005 level, and then below that is. 39.86.25, uh, which would firmly put the daily back into balance. Right now, it's just up to balance. Tomorrow, if we were to go take out Monday's low, then we'll be firmly in balance. Uh, if we would take out tomorrow or Monday's high, then the daily continues up. Uh, so if we open above this 11 wide point of control, get the high of day, take out this high of day at 40.56 Monday's high, uh, then you can look to trade up to where this nine wide naked pock at 4076.50 uh, is located. There's a good possibility if this market can really start to put, get some legs beneath it. Uh, start trends looking to change. We can see that in our larger time frame. We're just going to review the weekly and our daily because the monthly is still in a balance. As you can see, the weekly is trading inside that monthly balance. Weekly is one time frame and up. One, two, three, four weeks in a row now. One time framing up, meaning we're taking out previous week's highs and setting higher lows. Continue that. We're trying to get above this trend line, find acceptance above the trend line. We continue that and we look to attack this um, 4141 level and then get up into the 4327 level. Also, not to, not to forget to note that is this gap is also a weekly and a daily gap. You can see that here on our, or bring up the daily balance, right? That is also a weekly gap, daily and a weekly gap up there in the 41, uh, 12, or a 4200 level in that area is a weekly and a daily gap. Look at our daily. So for ES, we, Came out of balance on Monday. We're tempting to find acceptance above that balance high. We closed above it today. We are one time framing up, but we're up to balance right now. We're going to look to see if we can hold above this trend line. If the 50 can cross over the 200 and all these moving averages converge and we continue to chop sideways. However, if we look at the uh, SPY, if we look at the SPY, just the ETF, the 50 day moving average hasn't quite touched the 200 day moving average yet. So there, it's a little bit different from the uh, ES futures contract, but SPY is attempting to curl up and have these moving averages converge. You can see here, inside day for the daily, we're still one time framing up, but up to balance. If we take out Monday's high, if we take out today's high, and Monday's high, we continue to one time frame up and gun for the next daily highs. So we'll see if the trend cha is changing or if we reject once again at these trend lines uh, and sellers do what they've been doing since last year and we finally sell this thing off back down to the lows. We'll see what can occur uh, in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody stopping by if you wouldn't mind. Leave a like, comment below if there's anything you'd like me to review such as a different stock, different ETF, anything of that nature. I'll break it down 30 minute daily, weekly, monthly, give you guys an update on that. Thanks. Catch you in the next one. See ya.